I'm Steve Abaddon of phage.org, phage-therapy.org, and biologyaspoetry.com.net and .org. And I am up here uh, on Chimney Pass in Sedona, Arizona, looking over at uh, Coxcomb and uh, Doe uh, Mesa across the valley. Um, early in the morning, it's still cool out at the same time. Hiking up here was not a trivial experience. Today I managed to forget my memory card, so instead of using my video camera, I'm using my uh, cell phone and uh, to, to film with, and that means that I don't have my notes, so I can't talk about what I wanted to talk about. So I have to decide what exactly I want to talk about, and I decided that perhaps I should talk about communication between viruses, because right now that is a hot topic um, in the viral world. A, a paper recently came out in Nature that uh, described some Bacillus subtilis phages that uh, apparently have an ability uh, to produce a hexapeptide, a uh, six amino acid long peptide uh, that are released from infected cells and move to uh, other cells uh, which pick up these uh, peptides uh, and it signals these other cells if they are, if they, are uh, or if they become phage infected uh, to display lysogenic cycles uh, rather than lytic cycles. And in the con as a consequence of that, uh, in the course of uh, their infections, uh, they are able to resist releasing virions into an environment that may already be packed, filled, full of uh, infections that um, are ongoing and which not only would not be available to these viruses, these phages, but also uh, would not uh, uh, necessarily keep from uh, destroying these release phages because as a phage is um, absorbed to an already infected cell, uh, that phage may be subject to various processes that can kill it, including simply the fact that the uh, infected cell already has a phage in there um, that is difficult to uh, dislodge, especially if that phage is of the same type as the uh, phage that is secondarily absorbing to that cell. And this was described as a form of virus-to-virus uh, -virus communication, uh, meaning that uh, a signal was being sent off from one virus, in this case a virus-infected cell, and it was being received by another virus, in this case also a virus-infected cell. And the world suddenly became very excited that, oh, we have our first example of virus-virus communication. But actually, that's not quite true. Back in 1946, a guy named Alfred Hershey, who would go on to win a Nobel Prize, discovered a process that is now called lysis inhibition. And this is seen with TEV and type phages. And these are phage uh, T2, T4, T6, and their relatives, and presumably a lot more phages than just that. And lysis inhibition is a process in which a virus, a phage, gets into a cell, starts infecting the cell. And if another virus comes along of approximately the same type and adsorbs to that same infected cell, then it causes the virus to delay its lysis. So these are viruses that don't display lysogenic cycles. They just display lytic cycles. But when they are secondarily absorbed, just like you see with these bacillus subtilis phages, instead of lysing soon in a normal lytic cycle, instead they delay their lysis. Now with the bacillus subtilis phage, the uh, lysis is delayed as a lysogenic cycle. With these Teven phages, the lysis is delayed instead as something called lysis inhibition. Now, you might be saying, oh, okay, that's fine. Another phage comes along, it attaches to a cell that's already infected. The cell says, oh, okay, uh, you know, there's other viruses out there, and therefore, there may be other infected bacteria out there, and maybe, therefore, there aren't as many bacteria out there for me to infect, and therefore, maybe I should hold on to this infection. Or alternatively, there may be more infected bacteria out there which could kill my progeny viruses if I release them, and therefore I should hold on to this infection, delay uh, release of those viruses. 
And in that sense, it's very similar to the story uh, that was recently published in Nature. The only trouble is, is that instead of it being a peptide signal uh, that is uh, being conveyed from an infected cell uh, to another infected cell, instead it's a whole phage. And so it might not be obvious that that whole phage represents itself a signal, uh, but in fact it does. Because what you have are other inf phage infected cells, and these phage infected cells are releasing viruses in the course of their normal lytic cycles. And when they release these viruses, the viruses in effect are a signal. If you have something that can pick up on that signal, and the things that can pick up on that signal are other phage infected cells. So when these viruses are released from the infected cells, they move to a different location, doesn't have to be very far, and they absorb to another infected cell it signals this other infected cell that there are other infected cells out there or that the uninfected cells have been depleted. And this causes the cell that receives the signal to extend its time of infection so as to either avoid releasing its uh, virus progeny into a environment in which uh, there are infected cells that could kill those viruses or alternatively, uh, so that it can hold on to its infected cell resource for longer so that uh, it can uh, utilize um, those resources to a greater extent, make more virion progeny. Because presumably uninfected cells are now rare because there are lots of phages around to infect them. The idea that phages are actually causing lysis inhibition by secondarily absorbing to the uh, cells that are, or, that are infected with uh, the teeth and phages. Uh, that was developed by Gus Dorman uh, in 1948. And if you go through the processes that Gus Dorman went through in order to figure out that in fact it was phages uh, that are serving as the signal, uh, you find that, that the experiments that were done in the logic that uh, he went through were very similar to that used in this recent nature, nature paper. So what you have here is a exciting finding that uh, essentially phages are capable of doing quorum sensing in a more traditional sense of what quorum sensing is all about. That is the idea that small molecules can be released from bacteria and picked up by other bacteria to signal uh, the recipient bacteria so that they can respond, for example, to more crowded conditions that the signal implies. But even before quorum sensing was discovered, in fact, lysis inhibition was known. And lysis inhibition really represents, although I suppose not technically quorum sensing, still the first quorum sensing-like phenomenon that was discovered in the bacteria realm. So that's a little history. It's, it's interesting how science kind of repeats itself. Uh, right now, I'm uh, interested, or have been for, I suppose, a long time uh, in the history of what we do, and not just for history's sake, but because people who did work a long time ago uh, did work that isn't necessarily irrelevant to what we think about and know about today. And the fact that we have the first example of virus-to-virus -virus communication having been discovered in 1948, but nobody knows about that, and then suddenly in 2017 we're all excited that virus-to-virus -virus communication has been discovered, it really just kind of makes you think. And it's fascinating how history unfolds. And this is a good example of how Ideally, history would not unfold, uh, but indeed, the past does tend to be forgotten. And my hope is, is that uh, to some small degree, I can keep that from happening. So I'm Steve Abaddon, phage.org, phage-therapy.org, biologyispoetry.com.org.net. And I am looking out on a valley that's just absolutely gorgeous with coxcomb and domesa surrounded by nice cool rocks with the sun rising up over my shoulder. Have a good one.